Users, it is time for me to run through my install from source article again with the release of 4.0.2 and this time while I go through it I will have a video recorder running so you can watch my steps as I go through the article in case there's something that you get stuck on or if there's something that isn't clear you can watch me go through it live on a virtual machine and you can see the output that I get and maybe some more specifics hopefully it'll help you better alright so basically I'm going to be going off of this article here. I will post a link to it directly in the description of the video. Um, but basically, there's an article here where I describe the commands on how I do a Nagio setup from source. Um, I believe um, that we're on a new version since I last did a run through. So this would be a good time to do that. <coughs> Oh, we are on 4.0.2. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to edit this post. I'm going to change all 4.0.1 to 4.0.2. So I'll bet not much has changed. So I will do a full run through to make sure I'm not actually breaking any of these links. That's fine. Update. Fun fact is most of these I'm just going to be copying and pasting directly from the article. And you should do that too. Alright, so let's begin. So we're going to install Nagios from source. Um, right now this box has nothing on it. It's a fresh Ubuntu server. Um, in fact, do I still have one core? No, I've put four. So, I mean, there's like nothing running. We're pretty minimal hardware specs in terms of memory. I gave it four processor cores, but small hard drive. This is just for the purpose of demonstrating. All right, so I'm going to follow the article on my website. Uh, I'm going to do the same configuration that we have there. I'm pretty much going to be copying and pasting most of the commands as we go. I'll just be explaining what I do as I do them. Um, I'll probably type maybe the first one, and then after that I'm going to get tired of it. Uh, so basically right here I'm just creating a single user because we're going to run this under a different person. And I'm just, uh, whoops. Create a password. You don't have to create a password if you don't want to. A lot of times uh, to test Nagios plugins, sometimes I'll log in as shell um, under that user which is why you have that, uh, which is why I assigned bash to that profile. If that's a security risk in your environment, you don't have to do that. Um, I just do that to, um, for testing plugins. So I'm assigning them to groups. I have to assign them to the same group as Apache because it's going to be modifying some command files and some files within the uh, folders that Apache owns. All right, let's download some archives. So right now I'm just downloading and, and extracting these files. Again, all these commands I'm pretty much copying and pasting from my article. There's some packages that I need to uh, install, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. Sure. Having an internal mirror is great. Alright, so now it's time to configure. Remember we created that separate user group for Nagio, so we have to specify that here in the configure command. So we'll go ahead and configure it. When I do the actual video, I may um, cut this stuff out, but it's actually running fairly quick. Why do I love black coffee now? 
It is 3 o'clock and I'm still drinking coffee that was on a hot plate since this morning, straight black. I blame Seattle. So, this shows some different options here for different uh, components we can install. Um, according to my article here, we'll do that one, that one, that one, oops, that one. I like how I'm being descriptive. And that one. All right. Section done. All right, so now we're going to compile. So Nagios is now compiled and installed. That's done. Easy enough. Uh, next, we're going to do the plugins. And the plugins does have some prerequisites. We'll go ahead and we'll install those now. Again, I love my internal mirror and solid state drives. This should only take a minute. I'll go back to my drinking my black coffee. change into that directory. And we're going to configure this also with the same um, user groupings. Pilot, not finally. Next step. And um, there's really no special install options. It's just make install. All right. Um, Next, uh, we're going to do an RPE. Um, I know in the article it doesn't, I believe in the make install options, there's an option to just do the executable. So in the article I say run make, but don't run make install. We just do, you know, we just copy it out. Um, I'm still just going to do that. Those last steps in the article where I compiled with providing the path for OpenSSL, that was a pain in the butt to figure out. Just wanted to specify that in the four seconds it took me to copy that command. Saving research is great. Now what I want to do is um, create Apache credentials. Um, so I'm just going to create a simple password since this, since this is just dev. Um, and the next section here is uh, we're going to start to verify the configuration. Before I do that, though, I'm going to create a bash alias because verifying or that command for um, verifying the config is kind of long, and I can never remember what it is. So it's that. If you want to type it every time you do it, that's fine. Otherwise, I just create an alias. So let me re-log in here. So if I run and verify, we're verifying the configuration, and it's different. Huh. Anyways. Ah, oh, didn't work. 
didn't see that coming. Okay, so there's it looks like there's still a problem with this later version. Um, I'm gonna go to that mentioned post in the article that I linked to, and we will select that code. MTC. There may have been a bit easier way to paste all that in there, but oh well. Huh. Wish I remember what that does. Yay. All right, so we got it running now. Uh, so let's just configure it to run at startup, which is easy enough. And we have reached our first checkpoint. So let's just try and browse to it. So the name that I give the virtual hosts is that. Of course, oops. Type that in. Of course, Google thinks that's a search. We want that. Hmm. I know what I did. And this, my friends, is why this is a test video. You know what the problem is? I have this on my internal private network. Ah, I can't browse to the web from it. Yes, I can. I just can't do DNS. Okay, so I'm just going to do 172. Okay, so let's see. All right. So there's no DNS, that's fine. I can work with that. Yes. All right, works. Uh, I can go to services. Um, we'll just run them all. Drink my black coffee while this runs. Yay. I'll accept the ping. So take one long, good, hard look at this screen. Because what we have here is something beautiful. We have a screen where there is no problems. <laughs> you will never see this again. So back over to the other screen you go. We will move forward. Next section is installing the graphing utility. So we'll go ahead and install some prerequisites. And download this. I don't know if the version changed. This version's already a few years old, so I'm just gonna assume it didn't. Install. I'm just going to check. And we're good. So this should be the same. Nothing has changed in versions here. So uh, in the article, pretty much everything is the default except the last two options. So then I go. S Wait, I lied. Uh, last four. Modify. Nagios configuration, yes. And the commands file is this. And update the Apache, yes. Continue. All right, so we're gonna s restart Apache. 
Alright, well, before I do that, let's just verify the configuration. I know we didn't change it, but always a good habit to do. Now, we can access the graphs by going here. There's not going to be any graph data yet. We just installed it, so we'll give it some time. But that's the URL. All right, so now it's time to uh, put in some hacks here that allows us to see graphs within the um, within the status overview. Um, so you have that other URL that you can go to, but also I like being able to view it from just the services section. Uh oh, why is that not running? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I wonder if this would be better if we did all on one screen. How bad would that look? If I put that here. And I put that here. It's gonna be a pain to copy stuff. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go the rest like that and see how that works. I don't think I'll like it, but we'll continue on. Alright, so if I want to include these graphs, it's going to be as an action URL. Um, so I need to edit. Um, let's see, objects, the local host option. Alright, so if you look down here, so something that we want to show for would be the ping. So if we were to go to the ping block here, what it's going to do is it's going to be an option for uh, there's two graphs we can show so we'll utilize the action URL and the notes URL so we'll just put them in here back to the beginning and we'll put in some spaces to make it look prettier so if you see here, Vim is kind of complaining about it. The reason is is because we use some kind of like injection methods. See how I'm closing a quote here to inject an HTML tag? So there's an odd number of quotes in this line, so Vim will complain about it, but they'll go over it. So what's something else we can graph? Um, we can also graph, um, let me just go through the different services here and we'll place them where we can. No. That's a host group service. Uh, disk space usage. Sure, we can put it there. Um, users, I don't care to graph users. Total processes. Sure, we can graph that. Um, current load, most definitely we want to graph that. Uh, swap usage, eh, SSH, no. Um, SSH and HTTP does return performance data. See, this looks hideous. I don't want to do it like this. Um, it does return performance data. However, um, I mean, it's like response time. Who really cares? I mean, if it's something that's going to change for you, then you can put it in there, but I've never found a use for it.
So we're modifying that. Um, I also want to change the icons. Oh yeah, so I explained that all here. Uh, did I not do the icon link? Huh, I did not. Fascinating. Alright, so we got that. Refresh. Go to services. Why don't you like to restart? Okay, you say you're running. I don't know if I believe you. Okay, now you are. Whatever. So this is where you can have the pop-up graphs. Um, and I need to change that icon. I forget what it was, though. So let me just go in here. Notes. So that one is in share. Um, images, maybe? Yep. And I want to match that to action. Oops. Coffee's making me jittery. More coffee. Alright, so we got services here. Alright, so now we show the graph icon for that. Good. No data yet. I'm just happy that the graphs are actually showing and not a uh, round robin database error message. All right, so we'll put the article back over here where it belongs. We'll maximize this window. Uh, all right, onward. Oh, we actually already did the checkpoint. Fabulous. All right, now to install the, the graphing tool that we use to monitor Nagios. Uh, we'll just say yes there, it's fine. And we're copying over the default configuration. I should point out here that someone in the comments mentioned that this file doesn't exist for them. Uh, they most likely did not conf run the configure procedure for Nagios or didn't compile it, so they most likely skipped a whole step. These .ion files are templates, so to speak. Um, so if I were to do um, show you the difference between these two files, you can see that it takes out these variables and replaces it with absolute paths. So it's most likely taking place when I'm running configure. I'm not too familiar with the actual structure of source code um, that, that make uses. But just looking at these files, uh, this looks like some sort of template, and this is uh, what shows up after I run configure on the Nagio source code. Anyways, moving on. Create a directory for our stats, modify the configuration, and apply that working directory. Let's put that there. And we're going to run this for the first time. Yes, it threw some error messages. It's just because it's running for the first time. If I run it again, there's any more messages. Didn't do that before. I expected a number for n, but got something else. Huh. Let's see if that affects anything. I mean, those are just warnings. Oh, there's an error message there. It's interesting. All right, creating the cron job. Um, so that'll run daily? No, every five minutes.
So where did I put the stats folder? Alright, so I put it there, so we should be able to... So this is where the stats go here. Um, that error message, I don't know if that's going to really give me a problem. I'll have to check back on there and see if these update. I mean, a lot of these graphs show data, so maybe it's just one of these that's going to wig out. Alright, so that was the checkpoint three, was to view the stats. So we did that. Um, so now let's go over some template things. Um, so we made some changes and some add-ins. We added the stats and we added the graphs. Um, what I want to do is make some changes to how the web interface functions. On the left-hand side, we'll add some additional links. Makes it easier. That way you don't have to remember additional URLs. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to change the home page because it goes to like that welcome screen when you log in here. So like when you log in, it says, hey, welcome, getting started. I don't care about that. You, I care about that like the first time I use it. And then after that, it's pretty much useless for me. Latest news, eh, great to hear about a new release. But personally, when I'm logging in, I want to go right to the services page. So I'm going to get the URL for that which is that. In fact, I also uh, want no limit. So that's what I'm going to do for that. And that is changed here, this core window. I want, I believe I change it to that. Let me check. <laughs> I don't remember. Yes. So now, if I open up the new tab and I paste that in there, it goes right to the services page. And if you really want to go to that home screen, you can by clicking that home link there. But personally, I want to go straight to the services page. Alright, so we can quit that. And getting down to the end here. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is configure the sidebar. So in the article here I have a couple links that we can put in. Um, I'm just going to copy that in for now. Um, I want to put it right above the reports. So we're going to put it right here. Um, so if I were to refresh this page, see external tools, this is where the graphs come in and then you can go right to the Nagios graph, which, you know, we only have local host, but I can tell that my local host has really good ping times. It better because it's a virtual machine on the same box. Um, so pretty simple. I mean, like right now at this point, we have like no services. It's the default configuration, but that's all the article covers. So we're done. We have a working base install. And the article is now updated for Nagios version 4.0.2. If you find any issues or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. I do my best to respond to each and every one of them. And don't feel bad if you think there's a problem. I'd like to know about it. Helps me build more stable environments myself and clarify where needed to help you and other people understand it. Thanks for watching.